Hi guys, welcome back to Hillside Homesteading. Today I have a few chores that I have to do. So it's a really wet day here. It is 13 degrees Celsius, so it's really warm. And it's a beautiful day to spend with the animals and down by the farm. Here are some of the weirdest eggs your chickens could possibly lay. Body checked eggs are those that are wrinkled or have a slight bump in appearance. This is due to them previously being damaged while in the shell gland pouch, and it's often caused from a lot of stress or pressure being put on them. Shellless eggs. Some of the most weirdest alarming eggs. A shellless egg is seemingly a common occurrence, especially in younger layers, because their systems are still warming up to the laying process and their shell gland is still immature. Flat-sided eggs, or known as slab-sided. These eggs appear to be somewhat flattened on one side and it usually has a wrinkled edging and they're more common in younger layers. It gets its misshapen appearance from being kept too long on the shell gland. Rough shelled or pimpled eggs. These eggs have different textures and are due to a range of things. Little bead-like growth on the egg are known as calcified substances and may be a result of excess calcium intake. Sometimes it's also due to disease or a defective shell gland. However, the eggs are usually okay to eat. Egg within an egg, there's nothing more alarming than cracking an egg into your frying pan and seeing there's another whole egg inside of it. But consider yourself lucky as this is a remarkably rare occurrence. This bizarre event results from an early launch of a new yolk while a present egg remains in the formation stage and is not yet laid. Then a membrane surrounds it and encases both eggs within another shell. Blood spots can appear on the surface of an egg yolk and it's a direct result of a blood vessel being broken while in the gut or in the oviduct as the yolk travels through it. Yolkless eggs, also known as rooster eggs or wind eggs, are super small yolkless eggs are often produced by layers that are really young and their immature non-synchronized reproductive system just hasn't kicked in yet. It can occur in older hens as well. In an older hen, the yolkless egg, it's as a result of a piece of tissue in the reproductive tract breaking off and being treated as an egg. Who can resist a two for one egger? Double yolk eggs are more commonly produced by new layers or those that are nearing the end of their laying life and is often a hereditary characteristic. These are usually physically larger eggs and they accommodate two yolks and they're very yummy. So let me know what's the weirdest eggs your chickens have ever laid. Leave it in the comment section below. I look forward to reading it. So let's go check out the goats and see what they're up to. Hi hey everyone. I don't really have anything for you. Hi guys. Hi Opie. Hey Bucky. Hi honey. Hi honey. How you doing, baby? Hey, Violet. Hey, Violet. Hey, Lizzie. Hi, MP. Come here, BP. Come here. Yes, BP is the most friendly goat we have. Bucky's quite friendly too, aren't you, buddy? But BP here, he just loves cuddles. You right, buddy? Yes, look at him. I know. Don't I feel good? I don't have any snack. Hi, honey. Why are you always up there? This is where I fell last week. <laughs> slipped right here it's pretty hard fall but I'm okay so we had a really windy past few days and the wind actually blew this rain barrel all the way from by the chicken coop area and it blew it all the way down here and it's way too heavy for us to carry because it's full of frozen water so there's ice in there and we basically have to just wait until it's thawed before we can move it back by the chicken coop under the eavesdrop, and then we're gonna actually dig out a little spot so that the barrel can sit in there so it won't be able to, uh, it won't fly around as easily. So we're gonna have to do that. This is that wet spot of the property. The lake is just that way. 
there's water here. This is where it's actually supposed to go out, all this water, but it doesn't drain that way because it actually, it's on a slope this way, so it kind of backs onto the property here. Now, during the heat of the summer, we usually don't have to worry about this too much. Because it's spring right now, everything's thawing and melting, and so we have a lot of excess water. The stream is back there, right over this hump, and uh, we're gonna probably check it out, go fishing there, see what we can catch soon. Up this way is where I have my, one of my little garden patches right here. And this is where I'm planting all of my onions and garlic this year. My garlic's already planted. It's in the ground, covered by snow. And so you won't be able to see anything because it's completely covered with snow. So I'm starting my onion seeds this week. So make sure if you want any tips on growing onions, make sure you come back to the channel, but I'll be starting my onions and then I'll be bringing them out here uh, in about three to four weeks or so, depending on the weather. If it starts snowing, I won't be bringing them out, but this is the fruit orchard. Can't see much right now, but right here is my pawpaw belt. These are all pawpaws. Right here is the blueberry patch. And these are some of the fruit trees. I did prune all of my trees and berry bushes uh, earlier this winter. So that was about four, four months ago now. So everything's been pruned and uh, they're all looking okay. I also have some smaller pawpaws here as well. And uh, we'll see how they fare. All right guys, well, this was just a quick little tour this beautiful day. I'll probably go back down there, give the goats a few treats and uh, collect some more eggs from the chickens. But as for now, that's it. So thank you for stopping by the homestead. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Stay peaceful. Bye.